Every day we discover new things, some about the future, others about the past. The events from the past can tell us a lot about how people lived back then. Some things they did might seem strange or even cause trouble if they happened today. There are also old practices that have been left behind because they were harmful. On the other hand, there were also amazing individuals who did great things in their time. Even if you studied history in school, chances are you didn't hear about some really interesting historical events. In today's video, we'll explore 20 facts from history that you probably didn't know. Number 20. Wars that incredibly started over food. Imagine a scenario where the origins of a war trace back to an unexpected source, food. It may seem implausible, yet history presents us with the amusing yet real incident known as the Pastry War of 1838 to 1839. This peculiar conflict unfolded as a minor disagreement between Mexico and France, sparked by a French pastry chef named Monsieur Remontel, who had established a pastry shop in Veracruz, Mexico. The intriguing tale began in 1828, following a heated election dispute between presidential candidates Manuel Gomez Pedraza and Vicente Guerrero. Saldana. Loyalists of the opposing candidates clashed on the streets, resulting in the unfortunate destruction of property, including Monsieur Remontel's pastry shop. Seeking reparation, the French chef approached the Mexican government for compensation, only to face refusal. Fast forward to early 1838, and France leveraged the unaddressed claims of its citizens as a pretext to dispatch a fleet to Mexico. The mission, to blockade the main port of Veracruz. In response, Mexico declared war on France, leading to French troops attacking and capturing the city. Amidst the escalating tensions, British diplomatic channels intervened, prompting Mexico to agree to pay the demanded sum of 600,000 pesos to France. With the financial dispute settled, the French troops withdrew from Veracruz and their fleet sailed back to France in 1839, marking the end of this peculiar episode in history. The Pastry War serves as a fascinating reminder that conflicts, even wars, can have surprising and unconventional beginnings. Number 19. Thomas Edison Edison didn't invent the electric light bulb. Contrary to popular belief, it was not Thomas Edison who conceived the idea of inventing the light bulb. However, he deserves credit for perfecting the device. Electric light bulbs had already made their debut before Edison's time, with the carbon arc light taking the stage in the early 19th century. This innovative source of light, crafted by the British chemist Humphrey Davy in 1807, utilized the vapor of battery-heated carbon rods. Unfortunately, these early bulbs had a drawback. They required manual lighting, leading to frequent burnouts. Various attempts followed Davy's invention, including designs by Warren de la Rue, whose platinum filament proved too costly, and William State, whose batteries were prohibitively expensive. Additionally, Joseph Swan's design suffered from inefficiency. Edison, recognizing the limitations of his predecessors, acquired some of their patents and embarked on perfecting the light bulb. In 1879, Edison introduced his groundbreaking invention, although it initially had a limited operational lifespan. So why is Edison credited with the invention? The pivotal moment came in 1880 when he identified the right material for his light bulb's filament, carbonized bamboo fiber. This discovery significantly extended the burning time compared to previous materials, ultimately solidifying Edison's place in history as the mastermind behind the practical and enduring electric light bulb. Number 18. The government once poisoned alcohol during Prohibition. In response to escalating alcohol abuse in the United States, the government implemented a drastic measure in 1926, prohibiting the production, sale, and consumption of alcohol. This marked the beginning of the Noble Experiment, where an unconventional strategy was employed to discourage alcohol consumption. To achieve this, the government mandated the inclusion of poisons, like methanol, in industrial alcohol. Rather than directly poisoning alcohol intended for consumption, they enforced the denaturation of industrial alcohol, making it inherently unhealthy. Companies added toxic chemicals including quinine and methyl alcohol as a deterrent. Despite the ban, the demand for alcohol persisted, leading to the thriving sales of now toxic liquors. The consequences became apparent on January 1, 1927, with 41 deaths at New York's Bellevue Hospital due to alcohol-related poisonings. As the detrimental impact of this strategy became clear, the prohibition law was repealed in 1933. The federal poisoning program, designed to deter alcohol consumption, was estimated to have tragically caused at least 10,000 deaths. It serves as a stark reminder of the unforeseen consequences of attempting to regulate societal behavior through extreme measures. Number 17. 
Albert Einstein was once offered the Presidency of Israel. While Albert Einstein is widely recognized for his groundbreaking contributions to theoretical physics, not everyone is aware of his foray into the political arena. In 1952, an unexpected opportunity presented itself for Einstein to make a mark in the political world following the passing of Chaim Weizmann, Israel's first president. The Israeli government, led by Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion, extended an offer to Einstein to assume the presidency. It's worth noting that, in this context, the role was more symbolic, carrying the weight of honor rather than wielding significant power and authority. The rationale behind considering Einstein for this esteemed position was clear. His unwavering support for the state of Israel throughout his lifetime. However, contrary to expectations, Einstein declined the offer promptly. He cited his advancing age and a perceived lack of relevant skills as reasons for his refusal. Remarkably, he even turned down an official meeting with representatives of the Israeli embassy. While the offer allowed him to continue his scientific pursuits alongside the presidency, it came with the condition of relocating to Israel, a stipulation Einstein was unwilling to accept. In light of Einstein's decision, Zionist leader Itzhak ben Zvi assumed the role later that year. The episode not only sheds light on Einstein's humility and self-awareness, but also highlights the delicate balance between honoring an individual for their contributions and respecting their personal choices and limitations. Number 16. The Olympics used to award medals for exquisite arts. Between 1912 and 1948, the Olympic Games expanded beyond athletic achievements to include arts competitions in literature, architecture, sculpture, painting, and music. Winners were honored with gold, silver, and bronze medals. This unique aspect of the Games became widely known only on the eve of the 100th anniversary of the first artistic competition. In 1912, at the Summer Olympics in Stockholm, American Walter Winans showcased his talent, earning both a gold in 1908 and a silver in 1912 for a captivating sculpture featuring a 20-inch tall horse pulling a small chariot. The inclusion of arts in the Olympics traces back to Pierre de Coubertin, the founder of the modern Olympics, who believed in the historical significance of art festivals in the ancient games. Despite awarding 151 medals across various creative disciplines, the logistical challenge of determining artists' amateur status led to the removal of artistic competitions from the Olympic Games. While a nod to historical traditions, the evolving nature of the Games prioritized athletic events, resulting in the discontinuation of artistic competitions. Number 15. Columbus didn't actually discover America. The commonly held belief that Christopher Columbus discovered America has been ingrained in our understanding of history, often reflected in American textbooks that typically begin the narrative in 1776. However, this narrative overlooks the fact that America was already inhabited by diverse indigenous communities for at least 15,000 years before Columbus's arrival. Columbus set foot in the Americas at a time when the continent was home to numerous small nations and several empires, including the Inca in Peru and the Aztec in Mexico. The credit for the first European settlement in the Americas goes to the Viking explorer Eric the Red, who established a colony in Greenland around 982. His son, Leif Erikson, furthered these endeavors by founding a settlement in Newfoundland around the year 1000. While the Greenland settlement endured for 300 years, the one in Newfoundland faltered after just a decade. So, what did Columbus achieve to earn the title of the man who discovered America? His historical significance lies in being being the first European to successfully establish a foothold in the Americas and create a trade route for the transportation of goods and slaves. In essence, Columbus didn't discover America, he commercialized it. The next time someone asserts that Columbus discovered America, it's a clear indication that they may not possess a comprehensive understanding of the rich and diverse history of the Americas. Number 14. The shortest war was between Britain and Zanzibar. The Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896 holds the distinctive title of being the shortest war in history, lasting a mere 38 minutes. Its genesis lies in the Heligoland-Zanzibar Treaty, signed between Britain and Germany in 1890, which placed Zanzibar under British influence, while Germany gained control over mainland Tanzania. With Zanzibar now a British protectorate, efforts were made to install a puppet sultan aligned with British interests. In 1893, Hamad bin Thuwaini, a British supporter, 
assumed the position. However, after a brief three-year rule, Hamad's demise under mysterious circumstances triggered a swift and tumultuous succession. Upon Hamad's death, his cousin Khalid seized control of the palace with armed forces, defying Basil Cave's diplomatic call for him to step down. Basil Cave, the chief diplomat in the region, witnessed the escalating tensions. At 9 a.m., British ships were given the order to bombard the palace, resulting in the rapid destruction of the majority of Khalid's artillery and forces within two minutes. While Khalid managed to escape, leaving his loyal servants and fighters to defend the palace, the war concluded astonishingly swiftly. By 9.40 a.m., a mere 38 minutes after the commencement of hostilities, the Sultan's flag was lowered. The brevity of the Anglo-Zanzibar War remains a remarkable historical footnote, highlighting the swift and decisive nature of this unique conflict. Number 13. The Persians once used cats as shields in the Battle of Pelusium. Ancient Egyptians' deep reverence for cats had a surprising impact on the Pelusium War, highlighting their profound devotion to these feline creatures. Cats were more than mere pets. They were seen as the embodiment of the goddess Bastet, associated with home, fertility, and women's secrets. This admiration for cats became evident during the Persian invasion of Egypt, 529-522 BC. King Cambyses II recognized the cultural significance of cats and strategically gathered them, along with with dogs and sheep, placing them in front of Persian soldiers as they approached the battlefield. This unique cultural dynamic included the high regard for dogs and sheep in ancient Egyptian society. In a tactical and psychological move, the Persians painted images of cats on their shields. The Egyptians, hesitant to harm the sacred animals due to their beliefs in the goddess Bastet, faced a dilemma between cultural convictions and the demands of war. Ultimately, they chose to retreat from the battlefield. The consequences were significant. The Egyptians suffered defeat in the Battle of Pelusium in 525 BC, falling under Persian control. This historical episode stands as a compelling example where cultural reverence for animals unexpectedly influenced the outcome of a military conflict. Number 12. Elephants used to carry out executions. The historical practice of execution by elephants, known as Gunga Rao, stands as a gruesome testament to the intelligence and power of these majestic creatures. Spanning over 2,000 years, this brutal form of punishment was prevalent in India, as well as various parts of South and Southeast Asia. In the Gunga Rao execution, elephants, guided by their mahouts or elephant trainers, played a central role. The mahout, armed with a sharp metal hook, exerted control over the massive animal, compelling it to carry out commands with brute force. The command, however, was nothing short of horrifying, inflicting a slow and torturous death upon the accused. The execution involved the crushing of the limbs of the convicted individual one by one, followed by tossing, dragging, and even stabbing with the elephant's tusks. The macabre sequence concluded with the brutal act of crushing the victim's skull. This gruesome method of execution extended beyond India, finding prevalence in neighboring Sri Lanka and the former kingdom of Siam. Shockingly, this cruel practice persisted into the 19th century, showcasing the endurance of such brutal traditions over the course of centuries. The eventual decline of this barbaric form of punishment can be attributed to the increasing presence of the British in India. Their influence and efforts towards reform played a pivotal role in bringing an end to the gruesome practice of execution by elephants, marking a step towards more humane forms of justice. Number 11. The Dancing Plague the Dancing Plague of 1518 in Strasbourg stands out as one of history's most enigmatic and peculiar epidemics. It began when Madame Trophy started dancing in the streets, and the phenomenon rapidly escalated as more townspeople joined in the inexplicable dance. The dancing continued relentlessly, with participants dancing around the clock, some collapsing from exhaustion, only to resume after a brief rest. Within a week, over a thousand people were caught up in this strange epidemic. City authorities, desperate to address the situation, adopted unconventional measures of the time. Initially, a designated building with an orchestra playing music was provided, but it failed to alleviate the condition. Bloodletting, a common medical practice, was also attempted without success. Faced with the spreading epidemic, authorities resorted to mass transportation of the dancers out of the city, successfully bringing an end to the phenomenon. What adds to the intrigue is that the dancing plague was not an isolated incident. Similar outbreaks occurred in the 14th century in France 
the 15th century in Belgium, and the 19th century in Madagascar. Scientists have speculated on various theories, including mass food poisoning involving psychoactive substances from the ergot fungus. Despite these theories, the true nature of the dancing plague remains elusive, making it one of history's enduring mysteries. Number 10. Alexander the Great was accidentally buried alive. Alexander the Great, renowned for establishing a vast ancient empire by the age of 25, left a lasting legacy. His military successes, conquering Persian territories without defeat, solidified his status as a military genius. However, historians have long pondered the sudden death of this formidable leader at 32, with various theories proposed. Scholars have speculated on the cause of Alexander's demise for decades, including typhoid, alcoholism, and poisoning. A recent theory suggests he may have had Guillaume and Barr syndrome, a rare neurological disorder that left him paralyzed for six days, challenging traditional accounts of his death. Dr. Catherine Hall proposes that Alexander may have still been alive when his soldiers prepared his body for burial in 323 BC, suggesting a potential false diagnosis of death. This theory, if proven, challenges the conventional understanding of Alexander's death, offering a new perspective on the final days of this legendary conqueror. Number 9. Russia ran out of vodka celebrating the end of World War II. On May 9, 1945, the news of Nazi Germany's surrender sparked wild jubilation among the citizens of the Soviet Union. The act of surrender marked the end of the Great Patriotic War, a conflict that exacted a staggering toll on the nation, with a loss of more than 26 million lives. The celebration of victory began in earnest, with even non-drinkers joining in the revelry. Approximately 22 hours into the festivities, Joseph Stalin addressed the nation. However, an unexpected consequence of the exuberant celebration unfolded. The entire population had consumed all the vodka reserves in the country. This unusual activity led the nation into a collective hangover, a peculiar aftermath considered by many as a small price to pay for the liberation of Europe from the clutches of Nazi Germany. It is crucial to understand the context of the vodka shortage during wartime in the Soviet Union. Starch and grain, typically used in alcohol production, were redirected towards food production and supplying the army. Despite the challenging circumstances, the production of vodka persisted. Even during the famine of the early 1930s, when resources were scarce, the nation ensured that grain and potatoes were made available for vodka production. This strategic decision reflected the significance of vodka revenues, which contributed about one-fifth of the Russian government's overall revenues. The tale of the vodka shortage during the celebration of victory stands as a unique historical anecdote, highlighting the resilience and adaptability of a nation during challenging times. Number 8. The first face on the dollar. One bill was not George Washington. When the name George Washington comes to mind, the image of the first president gracing the one USD paper dollar likely follows. However, the journey of George Washington's likeness onto the currency has an interesting historical context. During the Civil War, the US government faced the need to print new forms of currency as part of its efforts to fund the war. In 1862, the government introduced the first official paper currency, and among the bills created was the $1 bill. The early version of this bill featured Salmon Chase, the Secretary of the Treasury at the time and the designer of the country's initial banknotes. Initially, this money, known as greenbacks, was not backed by any tangible assets. After the U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing took over the production of U.S. currency, the $1 bill underwent a transformation. In 1869, George Washington's image replaced Salmon Chase on the $1 bill, marking a significant shift in the design. Since its redesign in 1963, the $1 bill has not undergone further changes, and there are currently no plans for redesign in the foreseeable future. The iconic image of George Washington remains a constant on this widely circulated denomination, symbolizing both the history and stability of the United States currency. Number seven, forks were considered a sacrilege. The forks we use today at the dining table were once considered sacrilegious, rooted in historical and cultural norms. Introduced in Italy during the 11th century, forks faced strong resistance in medieval Europe, where they were seen as artificial hands, contrary to the belief that fingers were the natural forks provided by God. The widespread adoption of forks as kitchen utensils occurred gradually in the Middle Ages. In the 11th century, a Byzantine princess caused a scandal by introducing forks 
forks to her Venetian household. This act, seen as a departure from tradition, led to the labeling of fork usage as blasphemous, attracting disapproval from local clergy. It wasn't until the early 18th century that forks gained acceptance in England, initially with two prongs, eventually evolving into three- and four-pronged forks over the next century. The journey of the fork from sacrilegious to an integral part of table settings reflects evolving cultural attitudes toward dining practices over the centuries. Number 6. There were more than 600 plots to kill Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, the former leader of Cuba, earned a reputation as a legendary survivor due to the numerous attempts on his life. Though the exact number of attempts, often cited as over 600, is a matter of debate. There are multiple documented reports of efforts to assassinate him in various creative and unconventional ways. Assassination plots against Castro included poisoning attempts, dosing his dive suit with a fungus causing chronic skin disease, and even attempting to blow up his podium during a speech. Despite the variety and creativity of these attempts all proved unsuccessful. In a 2006 British documentary titled 638 Ways to Kill Castro, it is claimed that Castro survived more assassination attempts than any living socialist. Fidel Castro himself addressed the multitude of attempts on his life with characteristic bravado. He once remarked that if surviving assassination attempts were an Olympic event, he would win the gold medal. Living much of his life in the spotlight, Castro managed to evade numerous threats on his life and passed away at the age of 90 on November 25, 2016. The legacy of his survival against a multitude of assassination attempts adds a unique chapter to the intriguing history of the Cuban leader. Before we move on, here's today's subscriber's pick. Take a look at this image. On the left, we witness a curious scene from a faceless beauty contest in Cliftonville in 1936. The paradoxical nature of the event raises intriguing questions about the criteria for grading beauty when the participants faces are entirely covered. The contest challenges conventional notions of beauty, prompting viewers to ponder the unconventional standards employed during that time. To the right, we encounter the peculiar device known as the French breast washer, a product from the 1930s. The device, designed to stimulate blood circulation in women's breasts through jets of cold water under pressure, reflects the beauty standards and health beliefs prevalent during that era. The promise of miraculous results, as touted in advertisements, adds a touch of quirkiness to the historical context. These images invite viewers to reflect on the evolving perceptions of beauty and the unusual methods that were once deemed effective. So viewers, what are your thoughts on these historical practices? Share your insights in the comments below. Number 5. Women were once banned from smoking in public. The Sullivan Ordinance, enacted on January 21, 1908 in New York City, reflects early 20th century gender norms. Prohibiting women from smoking in public, it mirrored conservative attitudes towards women's conduct. Unusually, the ordinance targeted business owners rather than penalizing the women caught smoking, placing legal responsibility on them. Mayor George McClellan vetoed the ordinance after two weeks, signaling hesitancy in enforcing such restrictions. Though short-lived, the ordinance highlighted prevailing attitudes. Women's smoking were morally judged, seen as sexually and morally perilous, contrasting sharply with men's freedom to smoke. The attempt to ban women from smoking symbolizes deeply ingrained gender biases and societal expectations of the era. The Sullivan Ordinance stands as a historical snapshot, revealing how conservative norms shaped perceptions of women in the early 20th century. Number 4. Germantown Nordlingen is situated in a 14-million-year-old meteor crater. The town of Nordlingen, nestled in the donau rias district of Bavaria, Germany, stands as a truly unique place on Earth. With a population of around 20,000, this town is distinguished by its extraordinary location entirely within the massive Nordlinger Ries meteorite crater. The formation of the Nordlinger Ries crater dates back approximately 14.5 million years, a result of a colossal meteor impact that occurred when a one-mile-wide meteor collided with the Earth. Interestingly, for many years, the shallow depression in the center of which the town resides was initially thought to be a volcanic crater. However, in 1960, two American scientists, Eugene Shoemaker and Edward Chow, provided evidence that unveiled the true origin of this exceptional town. Shoemaker's investigation involved scratching the walls of a church to examine its composition, revealing shocked quartz, a type of rock formed only under the extreme shock pressures associated with meteorite impacts. This discovery marked a pivotal moment, confirming that the depression was indeed the outcome of 
of a meteorite impact, rather than volcanic activity. As further exploration of the rock formations took place, the town of Nordlingen gained recognition for being situated within the confines of a meteorite crater, adding a captivating layer to its historical and geological identity. The unique nature of Nordlingen serves as a reminder of the profound impact that celestial events can have on shaping the landscapes and histories of our planet. Number 3. India has not invaded any country in the last 10,000 years. India's defense minister, Rajnath Singh, asserted in early 2022 that India, throughout its 10,000-year history, had never invaded or attempted to conquer another country. This claim raises curiosity, given India's historical vulnerability to invasions. To understand this perspective, let's explore the historical context. India as a unified nation emerged in 1947. Before that, the subcontinent comprised autonomous factions frequently at war. Unified governance occurred during the reigns of entities like the Marathas, Rajputs, Mughals, and Mauryas. Attempts by empires like the Greeks, Mongols, and Persians to conquer ancient India were largely unsuccessful. India's historical abundance of resources and its role as a major trade hub made territorial conquest less appealing. Indian rulers, while spreading Buddhism and Hinduism, favored peaceful means over military campaigns. Emissaries were dispatched to propagate religious and cultural influences. India's historical aversion to invading other nations stems from its resource wealth, trade importance, and a cultural inclination towards peaceful propagation of ideas. This unique perspective sheds light on India's millennia-long approach to global interactions. Number 2. The world's oldest parliament was built in 930. The Althing, Iceland's national parliament, holds the prestigious title of the world's oldest existing legislature, dating back to 930. Initially, it served as a gathering of influential leaders to legislate justice, albeit with societal discrimination against slaves and women. The assemblies, open to free men, became the primary annual social event. At the center of the assembly sat the speaker on the Logberg or Law Rock, with the Lagretta being a crucial faction. Comprising 36 district leaders, nine additional members, and the speaker, they played a a pivotal role in the legislative process. In a historic session at Thingvellir on June 7, 1944, the modern Republic of Iceland was officially established, marking a crucial juncture in its journey toward nationhood. Notably, Iceland holds the distinction of being the first nation to democratically elect a female head of state, Vigdis Finn Bogadotter, in 1980, breaking new ground for women in leadership roles. The All Things Enduring Legacy showcases its significance as a symbol of democratic governance and the rich cultural heritage of Iceland, the world's oldest parliamentary nation. Number 1. There were female gladiators in ancient Rome. Women gladiators, referred to as gladiatrices or gladiatrix, participated in the brutal sport of gladiatorial combat during the Roman Empire, as indicated by sparse historical evidence found in art, laws, and written accounts. While their involvement was not as widespread or intense as that of men, depictions suggest that women from various social classes, including the elite, engaged in fierce battles with weapons for entertainment. Affluent women, especially those of means, were more likely to take part in gladiatorial contests due to their ability to afford the necessary training and dedicate time to rigorous workouts. In the first century BC, women, particularly from the elite class, were observed participating in battles after dinner, facing off against various opponents, including beasts, dwarfs, and other women. Pompeii, during the reigns of emperors Nero, Titus, and Domitian, notably hosted gladiatorial events featuring female gladiators as a novelty attraction. However, in 11 and 19 AD, the Roman Senate implemented laws prohibiting middle and upper class women from fighting as gladiators. Despite these legal restrictions, the existence of female gladiators in Roman society reflects the complex and varied roles women played in different facets of life during that era, providing intriguing insights into the diversity of Roman entertainment and societal norms. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.